What's your vice, Mr. Amber? I'm sorry? Your wife wants to know what kind of drink you're having. Ah, let's say sherry. Okay. One, two, three, sherry. Comical. Chloe, maybe you can help me understand something. I'll give it a shot. Rose and I, we're worried about Rachel. Yesterday was so unlike her. What do you suppose is going on? Hard to say. Maybe she's rebelling against something. Or someone. What would Rachel have to rebel against? We've given her everything she could ask for. Yet I'm not sure I buy the narrative you laid out this morning in the principal's office. Rachel is not known for following along with anything she doesn't want to. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have concerns about your friendship, but perhaps you're exactly who Rachel needs right now as she navigates the choppy waters of adolescence. Uh, thanks. Yes, Chloe? The boss man would like a sherry. Thank you. The glasses are in the china cabinet. You can place one at his setting. How am I supposed to get to China? Kidding. <laughs> it's the fancy looking cabinet, right? You got it. Glasses. Damn. The embers are fancy as shit. Uh... It's the triangle-shaped one. Basic shapes. <laughs> now you're speaking my language. Yes, Chloe? What else? <laughs> Feel like I'm getting good at this. Only one last step. As our guest, you may do the honor of lighting the candles. The lighter is in the- It's cool. I've got my own. Oh. You never know when you'll need to light a candle. Right? You are a paragon of preparedness. Thanks. I think. Time to- Light some candles and pass this joint up a bit. <laughs> the Amber family and fire. What could possibly go wrong? So, Chloe, are you and Rachel in any of the same classes? I wish. Rachel's all honors. I'm still trying to get into remedial... What's it called? Vocabulary. What about that fire? <laughs> <clears throat> Dinner's really good, Mom. Thank you, Rachel. The way the fire spreads so fast, I've never heard of anything like it. Uh, it's almost surreal. They say a fire like that could only come from a crime of passion. Passion? What does that mean? 
I don't know. You tell me. Because you're the DA, of course. It's certainly troubling. The latest report from the commissioner's office suggests arson. Arson? Why would anyone do that? Any number of reasons. With everything going on in the world today, even a town like Arcadia Bay isn't immune to the ills of society. I cannot imagine how difficult these last few years have been for you, Chloe. Now that you and Rachel have become friends, I want you to know that our home is always open to you. Cool. Thanks. Well said, dear. It's imperative in such troubled times as these that we remember what is most important to us. Family. Family's not merely a gift. It is a responsibility. As such, those we love must be cared for and never, ever taken for granted. Enough of this asshole. Rachel may have to take it, but I don't. I'm going to turn his daughter and wife against him at his own dinner table. <clears throat> I'm not sure I agree, James. Oh? I thought you of all people would be grateful for family, at least. If you ask me, gratitude is just one more way privileged people tell the unprivileged that they should be happy with what they have. That is an excellent point, Chloe. We must always be sensitive to the way our privileges shape our perspectives. Well said, Mom. Still, there must be some room for personal responsibility. I'm sure you agree, Chloe. When my mom's boyfriend talks about responsibility, it's always code for him trying to control other people. Guess that's why they teach it in the army. See? This is why it's so important to invite diverse voices to converse with one another. It's absolutely stimulating. Hmm. Highly stimulating. Since you have answers for everything, Chloe, perhaps you'd like to enlighten us with some of your hard-earned wisdom about the world. Sure. I believe there's always darkness in this world, and it usually comes from the people we thought we could trust. Very well articulated, Chloe. I am consistently impressed with how politically aware your generation is. Chloe is an excellent articulator. Excuse me, dear? But if this is what passes for politically aware these days, we're in serious trouble. James, that's unfair and also rude to Chloe. No, I don't believe it is. It seems clear that these points Chloe is making are merely veiled attacks on me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it must be hard for you to relate to the working class. Maybe you should give me more chores to do so you can have a nice dinner without me. Chloe, I don't think that's fair. We've shown you nothing but kindness since you've arrived. I must agree. I don't understand the cause for this attitude. I'm done arguing. I'm going to protest your privileged autocratic fascist ideology with a hunger strike. Starting now. Well, Chloe, even if we don't fully agree with everything you say, we can always appreciate the passion of your convictions. Absolutely. Just so long as we make sure to always treat each other with respect and compassion. Give me a fucking break. Rachel! I can't sit here and listen to this bullshit anymore. Rachel! Stop it, Dad! You're a hypocrite! Okay? I know! You lying, cheating piece of shit, motherfucker! Excuse me? We saw you. Yesterday, at the Overlook. James? Kissing that woman. James. Rachel, honey, whatever you saw or think you saw, I know it's hard, but I need you to trust me. Think we saw? Are you trying to gaslight us? 
There's no thinking involved. We saw you locking lips with some other woman. Best part is, she and I use the same drug dealer. That's enough. You are not welcome here or around my daughter any longer. I know exactly what kind of person you are from the moment I saw you. And I let my wife's compassion get the better of you. Oh? What kind of person is a that? A delinquent. A broken girl from a broken home. That's enough, James. I will not have you continue to speak to her like this. Why can't you just tell me the fucking truth? Stop lying! Stop being a politician for one fucking minute! Can't you just be my dad? Rachel, that woman you saw, that wasn't my mistress. That was your mother. Shadows settle on the place that you left Our minds are troubled by the emptiness Destroy the middle, it's a waste of time From the perfect start to the finish line And if you're still breathing, you're the lucky ones Cause most of us are heaving through corrupted lungs Setting fire to our insides for fun Collecting names of the lovers that went wrong The lovers that went wrong I want to tell you all of it. But are you sure that Chloe should be here for- Chloe stays. Of course. In every way that matters, 
Rose is my wife and your mother. But the woman you saw at the Overlook, her name is Sarah, your birth mother. I'm going to tell you everything, Rachel. Everything I've shielded you from for so long. But the truth can be hard to look at. Is this really something you're ready for? Chloe, you can handle this. Not without you. in high school, there was one person everyone adored. Her teachers, her friends. Sarah was everyone's favorite. Every boy wanted to date her. I could barely believe it when she picked me. Sometimes, I think that's what kept me blind for so long. She was so alive, so passionate about everything. Early on, though, I realized I wasn't enough for her. While the rest of us were pursuing college, careers, families, Sarah wasn't looking for any of that. She was looking for escape. When Sarah became pregnant, I thought it would solve everything. And it did. For a little while. Becoming your father was the greatest moment of my life. There was so much love, but I was still blind. However much she loved you then, it wasn't enough. For Sarah, the need to escape was always there. Over a year, I tried to help her. I made myself believe that she was still a good person. That no matter what happened, she would never do anything to hurt you. was wrong. Eventually, I saw her for who she really was. A destructive person. Someone who could never be satisfied. By anyone or anything. Even the love of her own daughter. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. So I made a choice. I was never going to let her harm you again. (sighs) 
what you saw at the Overlook, Rachel? It was true, we kissed. It was the saddest kiss of my life. It was a kiss goodbye. I told her, and I was happy for her, that she felt like she'd gotten her life together, finally. But she didn't get to just decide one day to be a mother. Not after what she'd done. But after all the people she hurt. All the lives she destroyed. I told her she'd been given the greatest gift in the world. The chance to be your mother. And she squandered it. It pained me to hurt her like that. But I'd do it again, and again, and again, to keep you safe. So that was the first time you've seen her or spoken with her in 15 years? No. I send her money. Every single month. It's our arrangement. But now she wants to see me? Yes. But Rachel, it cannot be. You think you have the right to decide that for her? When I left Sarah, when I took Rachel away, I truly believe I saved her life. And I will continue to protect her no matter what. But maybe she's different now. Maybe people change, right? Maybe so. But consider that for 15 years, she's preferred that money to you. <sighs> Rachel. I think I need to lie down. I can't leave Rachel to... some way to show Rachel that I'm here for her. God, this light needs more light. Wonder what I could find around here to brighten up that nightlight.
All ready for Rachel's light show. Better get her attention first. Check it out. It's... beautiful. I thought you might like it. I've always loved stars. Why? They remind us there's so much beauty out there. Which we almost never see. Because we're blinded by what's in front of us. <laughs> exactly. But then I learned the truth. The stars we're seeing have already been dead for millions of years. They're all <laughs> lies. Fuck the stars. We can make our own. Yeah. It's all lies. Everything. My entire life. My dad. My mom. I can't even call her that anymore. And that other woman, my real mom, she's the biggest lie of all. I can't trust any of them. I think you're the only one in the world I can trust. I don't know. I bet there's, like, one other chick in Australia who's super trustworthy. No chance. You're one in a hundred infinities, Chloe Price. I wore this bracelet my entire life. I never even asked why. Never even thought about it. Somehow, I think I always knew. Even when I didn't know. That my real mother was gone. The fact that she's here right now. That she came here. For me. I think I need to see her. Is that wrong? Of course not. But it, it might be tough to track her down. Yeah. That's true. Luckily, I've got my secret weapon. But what if we can't find her? It's not like I can ask my dad. I have no idea where to start. Let me handle it. Really? Really. <laughs> Mysterious. I like it. Of course, even if we know where she is, we need a way to get to her. I can't just ask my parents for a ride. Don't worry. I've got that one covered, too. You do? Yep. In fact, anything you could come up with, I'll handle it. It's just like I told that biker dude at the mill. 
It was a lot scarier than this mom of yours could ever be. There could be flamethrowers, an army of robot ninjas, and a motherfucking dragon on a leash between you and her. And I would still find a way to get you there. <laughs> Chloe fucking Price. My magical Shakespeare fairy. Shut up. <laughs> but once we find her... How do I talk to her? What do I say? After my dad died, I was worried I wouldn't know how to talk to him anymore. But somehow, when we speak, I always know what to say. When you speak? In my dreams. He's there. And it's so real. It's almost like it's another part of my life. It used to be the only part that mattered. I've never told anyone about that. Weird, huh? Uh, Rachel? I was just thinking. Maybe I was wrong before. <laughs> Who cares if the stars are dead? As long as we can still see them, that means they're real. To us. Right? Right. <laughs>